Hey everyone, welcome back to another redstone video. Today we're returning back at the super smelter I made a little while ago. The reason why we returned to the super smelter is because I had a comment on my video last time uh, asking if I could build a super smelter and like an idiot I put an ultra low bar to go by and with the 10 likes that it took to get there I'm here now making a tutorial video. So if I've learned anything from this experience is to set the bar a little bit higher um, than 10 likes. So anyway, reluctantly, but also, you know, I'm going to do it anyway. Here is the tutorial of the super smelter. I have kind of forgotten how it works already. So um, we're going to kind of be building this together in some way. Um, although you won't see that. You'll probably see more of a tutorial thing going on. Anyway, onto the video. I hope you enjoy. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe because this probably took me five hours and I'm probably editing this right now thinking, yeah, this was long and unnecessary. But I hope you 14 people who like the comment enjoy it. Okay, thanks. Okay, so we're going to get things started by checking out what we're going to be needing to get this thing going. Uh, as you can see, the most expensive part about this whole setup is really going to be the hoppers. Um, in which case, we're going to need about four stacks worth. Um, powered rails as well, which are relatively cheap nowadays if you've got a decent gold farm. Um, and just a little bit of redstone. Um, yellow concrete can actually be any building block that you want as long as it's a solid block. Um, I would say pretty much anything is game there, so that's that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, furnaces obviously you'll need a stack of because it is a 64 so furnace array uh, again glass you can use whatever you want here whatever color you want here um, I think in some cases the glass is necessary I'm not 100% sure just go ahead and use glass anyway it shouldn't be too much of an issue and other than that we're going to need some rails redstone some trapdoors you're definitely going to need trapdoors again type of trapdoors uh, quartz slabs they don't have to be quartz slabs they can be any ones that you want ice definitely has to be packed or blue at uh, you know either one is fine um actually and as far as the honey's concerned you can use two slime blocks instead the honey is not necessary in this scenario um i just used it because it was it was the better looking things but yeah you can use anything you want on this one same again for stairs and all that kind of stuff uh warp sign you can just go ahead and ignore that's not necessary at all so this is everything that you're going to need so go ahead and grab all your stuff together and we'll get building just a disclaimer on this video, I'm going to build the entire furnace array as you see it behind me. That includes the uh, water transport system to bring the box back to where you see it over there. Right there. So if you don't want to build that part and you'd rather everything just go back into a double chest, which is a lot easier, um, I'll tell you where you can finish up. But if you do want to stick around and you want the uh, items to come back to you at the top near the, near the return chest, um, then you can just follow this guide as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to start off with is the furnaces. So we're going to want a row of eight furnaces. So we're going to go ahead and put the eight here. Six, seven, eight. And then we're going to want to do the same on the on the uh, back side and put another row of furnaces just like that. The next thing you want to do is grab a bunch of hoppers. So the hopper arrangement is going to go just like this. So you're going to want to put hoppers all along the top over here. And then you're going to want to add hoppers along the side, just like this. And you're going to want to do that on this side too, just to make sure. And I would highly advise that you keep the furnaces facing out this way. Try and not build it in where they face in this way, because if anything gets stuck in the system, at least you can see if something's not working from the outside. Okay, and then we're going to build the exact same thing a little bit further up this side. So you're going to want to leave space for the hopper for this um, furnace over here. And then we can build the furnace. So we turn this around and then we'll do the same thing again. And then we're going to build eight across just this way. So that's four, five, six, seven and eight. And then same again, put these along the back. And then you're going to want to repeat the whole hopper situation on this side over here as well. Okay, so once you're done, you should have the first half of the furnace array. And the next thing to do is to leave uh, a little bit of spacing in between and do the exact same thing on the other side. So we're going to put a space of four blocks and you're going to want to grab the first furnace. And then, as I mentioned, do the same thing again. Eight furnaces this way, eight furnaces behind it in the same direction, and then add all the hoppers in. Just an FYI, I'm not putting the hoppers for the collection in just yet. Um, because depending on whether you're going to want to use that system or just put it into chest, it might be a little bit of a different case. So we'll get back to that once we get down to the collection area. So the first thing we're going to do is start off with the minecart smelting system that sits up here. Um, what we should do is probably set up the orientation. That's probably the slightly more tricky part that most people are going to find in this situation. So I think once we do that, that's probably the bulk of the work done. 
Um, so let's start off with that first of all. So the step here is now to add your uh, your concrete blocks or whatever blocks you chose to build with. Uh, you can go ahead and pop these just like that. And basically you just want to pull this section over all the way until here. Just keep in mind some of these might be filler blocks and we might get rid of some of this in a second. I think most of it's going to go. But just go ahead and use all of it for now and then we'll tell you what ones to pop out later on. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to do is grab the, um, the blocks again and you're going to want to put two here. You're going to want to put two blocks of redstone and then you're going to put two more uh, just behind there. That's going to be where the minecarts come up from. Um, so you'll be using that for like leverage. So they'll be coming from just somewhere over here, basically. So now we're going to start off with the rails. Uh, we're going to start lining out where we're going to go and how things are going to pop back around again. So what we want to do to start off with is you want to place two blocks behind this section here. So go ahead and build two temporaries and then that will be the place you want to keep them. And then you want to grab your detector rails and we're going to want to put them up like this. But we're not going to keep this little rail here. This is just to get our orientation correct. And then we're going to get rid of it just like that. On top of this, you're going to want to get your double chest or your input chest. And then you're going to want to go ahead and place the blocks in just like that. All right. So once you place those down, um, I'm going to be honest, putting these here in the first place was probably not a good start because there's some other stuff to do around that might make things a little bit easier later on. Um, so we're actually going to go ahead and grab our trapdoors. And we want to go ahead and align the trapdoors just like this along the backside. So they need to be on the top half of the bottom layer of blocks. And you need to put that across the whole side just like that. The next thing to do is probably make the resting area for the minecarts. So we're going to go ahead and grab some redstone blocks. Put them in just like that. And then you want to fill in again this bit with the blocks that are going to go up here. The next thing you're going to want to do is set up the cables, sorry, the uh, rails on the backside from here. So the idea is, is that you want to get things looking like that. Now you can see maybe putting the detector rails down earlier on was a mistake, um, but we're going to use this just for now, just as leverage to attach this onto. So we're going to do the same thing up here as well. And you can see it instantly will attach to that. We can fix this by adding this rail at the top here, but unfortunately we've got some other rails to place first before we do that. Um, and then we'll come back to that in a second. So we're gonna go ahead and place these last two rails here. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go backwards on the whole system. So the return of the rail, so the rails are actually supposed to go down this way and they'll go through and then kind of snake around this way. But unfortunately due to the way that rails are placed, we're gonna actually go the, the other way around basically. Right, so once you've placed the rails like I have done so here, and these rails are looking like this, we're going to want to curve this around. And in this scenario, it actually did that all by itself. Um, you should probably have the same luck. And here's hoping. There we go. That's perfect. Now, um, this is basically going to make it so when the minecart rails, or sorry, when the minecarts return, um, they'll go on to this section. They're going to have some momentum, so they actually end up going a little bit too fast sometimes. So the rail needs to be kind of a little bit longer. Um, otherwise, they end up going too far up. Um, you can probably see from the original design, um, even though one of them sitting relatively low, uh, the other one's gone <laughs> a little bit further up from there. Um, so yeah, we just got to keep an eye out for that. Um, so the next thing we're going to want to do is obviously get these blocks in place. Um, those are the only blocks I believe that are relevant. The rest of those are all going to be filler blocks or just cover lo cover blocks to um, um, to let the water go by. So again, we're going to go ahead, ahead and attach those two just there. And now let's start working on the main part of the rails. So let's start off from this side first. Um, we're going to go ahead and grab this rail and then we're going to want to... We want to snake this around this way again um we're going to go ahead and now and get rid of these so once you curve this rail around we're going to go ahead and bring these up this way we're going to want to get normal rails for the curves obviously and then we're going to want to go all the way back up this way now the next thing we're going to want to do is we're not actually going to snake this rail around and um, we're going to go along this way so we'll need to put the two rails in this way so they don't get confused and then we can let that one sit in that direction then we're going to go back to normal rails and then allow the curving to follow straight on through. And so we'll just do something like that. And then we'll bring ourselves all the way back up here again. We're going to want to curve this rail around and then we want to bring this all the way back up to the top just there. Now the detector rail is going to go up here. 
um, but we're going to go ahead and do exactly the same thing we did on this side on the other side before we put the detector rail back in that should probably be the last thing that we do okay so we meet back around this area now that all the rails are perfectly in place just make sure everything is looking exactly how you see it here again the main issue is really just that things start sticking to each other but rails though they are annoying they're relatively easy to break and then to kind of fix as long as you kind of know what you're doing um but yeah as long as things look like this you are good to go the very last thing that we need to do is add in the detector rails so we're going to go ahead and put this on both of these sides and then we're going to put two temporary rails up here this can be anything for now because then we're going to go ahead and break them once they have made this kind of like um this kind of incline and then we're going to want to grab some fence gates just to block off the the mine carts as they come out again this can be any kind of fence gates and they will sit comfortably up here but for now, we're going to go ahead and put them in this place. So now that we've got the slightly more difficult part out of the way, uh, all the main weird curving rails are kind of done at the moment. Um, we might have some issues when we come to the, the refueling system, but we'll troubleshoot all of that together. That's not a problem. Um, but yeah, so for now, what we're going to do is we're probably going to build the clock system first because the clocks are probably the second most annoying thing to do. So once we can get that whole thing out of the way, that should be good. So now in, we need to place some trapdoors um, just underneath this. So the trapdoor should look look like it's uh, floating on a no block. And then when you can do the same thing on this side as well. Um, the reason for that is to make enough space for these minecarts to go up. But we're also going to need to pull a comparator signal out from that block that is coming from the uh, detector rail. So we're going to go ahead and pull the comparators from just like that. So we're going to go ahead and get the comparator signal just like this and then i think we're going to want two more blocks just in front of it okay so once you've done this you're going to want to grab your slabs and you're going to want to get underneath on both of these sides here and then we're basically going to be getting uh two repeaters so go ahead and grab your repeaters from your shulker box i assume and then we're going to want to do two of those and we're going to want a repeater just like that we're then going to want to put a block in front of that we're then going to go ahead and grab another slab and then we'll put a block in just like this and the reason why we're doing this is because we're going to want to pull that redstone signal out from this section so we will actually put a redstone uh redstone dust there and pull that on top of this as well we're going to want to go ahead and bring this all the way around and you're going to want to leave one block that kind of powers the fence gate so this this block needs to be here and then essentially all we do is grab uh oops sorry that needs to be a repeater we're going to want to bring the redstone signal just around like this and put the repeater into the side and you want to remember that you want to put no ticks on any of this repeaters this will make sure that the minecart picks up every uh, the minecart picks up 32 items every single time unless obviously there's not 32 items available in which case it will just split the even amount between the two minecarts so again we're just going to go ahead and repeat the same thing on this side so we go ahead and grab the two repeaters again we're going to grab a block go ahead and grab a slab that doesn't actually need to be a slab that can be a full block as well um i was just trying to save a little bit of real estate there and then again we're going to do this grab some redstone there we go everything is now in place um as far as the timings are concerned for that however we do also need to add in the timings to release the um the mine cards. so here's what we're going to do you want to add another block so we'll get rid of that you're going to want to add a block underneath or on the side of the detector rail and then you're going to want to put one more block up like this and then you're going to want to get a comparator which pulls the signal into this block and then we're going to obviously go ahead and uh sorry we're actually going to get a sticky piston and we're going to need a uh, redstone block uh we're going to want to go ahead and place the sticky piston just like that we're going to put the redstone block over here and then really what we want to do is we need to place another sticky piston. Oh, that wasn't right. 
Um, <laughs> we're gonna want to place a sticky piston just like this. In fact, it needs to go one block further down. Um, that should do the job. Yep, that should be right. And then you can go ahead and place a redstone dust on top of it just like that. Add another redstone block just there. We're gonna want to put another block here. And then we're gonna want to put a repeater here on no ticks. So this will be the 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 system that powers the minecart rails or the yeah the minecart rails when the minecarts need to go. So again, we're going to do the same thing on this side. So we'll grab a temporary block or sorry a, a a building block of your choice. Go ahead and grab the output just like this, and then sticky piston, redstone block, and then just be a little bit careful over here. So you're probably going to want to aim for this repeater when you place it down and that should give you the right position and then again we're going to want a redstone block go ahead and put a repeater in just like that and that should be the most of your system Oop, let's not forget the lost redstone dust to go on top so now hopefully everything seems relatively straightforward and um, there's only going to be one more confusing part of this whole thing i promise um, the rest of this should be pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna the only last more confusing thing to do is to add in the uh, The rails for the fueling system and the really annoying part is that when we get down here and we have to add in the rails Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is work on the fuel system seeing as though the main part of the build is basically done at this point um, So we're gonna go ahead and start off on this section. So all we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to build uh, some blocks out just like this and then we're going to want to bring it down uh two down so we're going to want to go four across from the rear hoppers from the refueling system and then we want to go in just like that and then we're going to want to do two more building blocks just like this now i'm actually going to go ahead and break these blocks for now they'll need to be returned there at the end once the minecart hoppers are in position but just keep in mind there'll be two more in the end just there so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and add in the refueling system for or the fueling wiring should i say um so again what we'll do is we will grab some detector rails and we're going to want to do something like that i think the best thing here is to maybe get in the curves beforehand so everything's kind of set in place that is perfect and then we'll do this so now that the rails in, pro in place we can break those and we can go ahead and do that and also we're going to want to add in the two fence gates here as well all right so then what we'll do is we'll continue to go ahead and bring these rails around you are going to need to add some temporary blocks when it comes to the fueling system as we don't have the extra length to go around them so we just go ahead and do something like this so we add in the blocks go ahead and put this on and then we're going to bring the powered rails around again now you gotta be a little bit careful when it gets to this part so I would advise maybe doing something like this and then that should attach to the right rails immediately. Um, that might save you a little bit of headache with it getting stuck to something like that. So again, we'll bring all this around. Now, this is where things will get a little bit tricky. So you can already see here <laughs> as I tried to place that um, the um, the rail here it's already started attaching to this but before we get to that i need to show you what we need to add to the under layer over here so this is just going to be the returning station for the minecart just keep in mind that this area needs to be built so i didn't show you this specifically because i needed to make sure i was doing it right so if i just show you now what you want to do is you want to come around down to the back of the collection system or the drop-off system should i say and then you want to go ahead and start building um, from the redstone block so you want to go from here and then you want to build downwards get rid of this block here and then you want to build four across and then you want to bring two of the center rows all the way in uh, until you get to this block that you built earlier and then that can basically just stay as it is all that's going to happen is the minecarts eventually will go down this path and then pop through this block and end up back in storage over here where it will add in the fuel system in a second so once you've placed those blocks uh, underneath, what you're going to need to do is temporarily just to break these rails on each side. Um, the reason is it's going to become difficult for you to try and snake the return rails on the other side around. Don't worry, it's really easy to put that stuff back in again. We just want to get rid of it for a second. And then we'll place this rail down here. We want to place this rail just like that. And then we're going to need to get into this little section. So 
use an ender pearl or a trap door to try and get down uh preferably not this one in case it breaks anything um, and then we want to put in a rail like this and then add that rail there if you make sure you add this rail in first and then add in this one it will snap to this otherwise it will probably end up snapping to this rail here instead which is where all the confusion starts to happen um, all right, so now that we've got rid of the rail there, we haven't done um, the, the the rails on this side, but we're just going to go ahead anyway and bring this down this way, and then we can continue on afterwards. But seeing as though we're down here, we might as well get things going. So we're going to add in that rail, and then again, we'll put in this powered rail here, and then add in this, and then that's it. Nice and easy. And then from here, if you just bring yourself down via ender pearl or trapdoor, that will automatically snap to the rails above. And that shouldn't have actually done anything to our rail alignment, but we'll double check in a second. One last thing I forgot to mention was to add in these redstone blocks to make sure that these uh, rails are powered as well. Uh, you can just go ahead and knock out these four blocks underneath uh, this this platform here. There's nothing under here that's relevant. Uh, so knock off these uh, four blocks and then add in the two redstone blocks. And actually, you can see on this side, it hasn't messed up any of the rail placement. So we're all good. So now we're just going to repeat the same thing um, of the return rails on this side. Make sure you put in the temporary blocks and then we'll add it on the last section over here. Okay, now that the rails are all nicely in place, um, we can go and have a little look around and make sure everything looks good. Now, um, obviously, we do need to add this rail back in just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. And once this is done, we are basically done with all of our rail placement. Just be a little bit careful now if you put anything down around here. Any rails will end up uh, changing some orientations by accident. But obviously... Keep a screenshot or something in your inventory make sure everything stays fine and at the end make sure all the rails are still exactly as they should be okay so what we're going to be doing for fuel is taking a uh, a comparator signal out of this hopper so all we're going to want to do is grab a block or a slab either one is fine and then you're going to want to go ahead and place a comparator down just like that you're going to want to go ahead and place a block just like that you're going to want to put a redstone torch down and then you're going to want to put a block on top of here. I'm assuming at this point you haven't put any fuel in, so we're going to remove that so things look how they should be. That should not be powered just yet. Um, and then you're also going to want to grab some redstone dust. Oop. And then we want to put a block in just like that. And then oop, we'll add a temporary block in just to get a repeater in place over here. And then you're going to want to go ahead and place a block in just there. You can get rid of that block that I placed by mistake. The next thing to do is to add in the comparator signal for the fuel. So again, we place the comparator signal down just like that. And then we're going to want to grab the observers. We're going to need some sticky pistons. Then we're going to need the honey or slime, whichever you prefer. None matters. And then what you want to do is once you place this comparator signal down or this comparator here, you want to place that just like that. The observer goes facing into the comparator, uh, a sticky piston facing this way, and then your honey or slime block that you prefer. The last thing to do is to add two honey blocks, uh, sorry, two redstone blocks, which you can do from any direction. So you want to add one right there and then another one just on top like that. The thing that does is give a comparator signal for this a comparator signal for this and also gives the ability to power this rail and this line of rails here as well so as we've done on this side we're going to do the exact same thing on this side as well Okay, so now just to show you exactly what's going on now that we've built up both sides. Um, so you can see this hopper here is empty, which means this comparator is off, which means this torch can be powered, uh, which means it can carry a signal over to the fence gate to tell the minecart hoppers that it needs to refuel the system. 
the reason why we're taking the comparator signal out of the first hopper is because that is always going to be the first or it's always going to be at least this one that gets used even if it's only one item that you smell it will be this one that gets prioritized to be used so that way we know if this um furnace is not full of fuel then at least we're covering this basis if we had used this one over here for example as a comparator output or even you know any of the other ones um then we would never make sure that the fuel is completely full of fuel so this is its constant state until it's completely full of fuel um so heads up for the fuel um you can actually make this a little bit cheaper for yourself instead of making this whole thing full of fuel to make sure it runs okay so actually let me go ahead and fill in the furnace with fuel as well so you can see here that the system is going to shut off once um this hopper is full now if you don't want to use this whole thing with um coal or whatever it is you're using you can actually fill these last four items with filler items please make sure that they're stackable filler items so we can go ahead and grab all of that out there and then we can get anything that becomes a stackable item so we'll use these uh trap doors for now and you can use the system like that that means even when one charcoal piece runs out um this will basically force the system to start fueling up the system so you'll never be short on fuel ever um you're going to need to do the same thing for every single other furnace around here again make sure these are at least filler items or you can go ahead and put the whole thing in there if you're a true baller um but make sure all of the furnaces are full before you do that so that that's the main disclaimer here is that make sure the entire system is full of fuel every first hopper item needs to be fuel um the furnaces all need to be full before you start the system off once uh, the system is set up and all the the hoppers are full of fuel and filler items everything should work as normal going forward from there okay so i've gone ahead and removed the items from this filter or i've removed one item from this filter so you can see the system is now thinking that it needs uh, fuel to keep up with um but you can see here that the gate is still closed even though that the system is in need of fuel so if i go ahead and place a minecart hopper down now um it's going to start getting fuel from the chest and the only time this is going to be able to go and refuel the rest of the system is once that is completely full of fuel once this fills up with fuel it will then be allowed to continue doing its job the reason i've done this is now so once the system is running and this does its first round around here once it comes back into this system um it will make sure it's full of fuel before it sets off again you can see here that the system kind of stopped because i haven't powered the rails up yet we're going to get to that in a second um but i just wanted to demonstrate to you how the system works so again when you do make this refueling system number one make sure you've got your double chest here that has all of the fuel full of here if you do want you can add hoppers and extra chests on top of it um to add more fuel storage or you can add a shulk loader whichever you prefer um, in this scenario though please make sure this is always full of fuel i would actually even advise that you add a system where you add a comparator so what you can do is grab the signal just like that Oop. there you go and i would add this system just like that so you have at least some indicator to make sure the fuel is full um, and then when you run out this light will go off so you'll need to keep that in mind you don't need to do that on both sides in fact you can get rid of that um, but make sure you have at least one of them going okay so we're just going to go ahead and grab the redstone blocks add the same situation on this side and now the next thing to do is to add in all of the redstone blocks to power all of the rails up now this one should be pretty straightforward this is how i figured out the best way to use the redstone blocks were so we're going to go ahead and add a redstone block just there then we add a redstone block just here and then basically we're just going to go ahead and carry this over on both sides now i know that this redstone line is powered but this one isn't and you could put it on top but it just looks a little bit nicer and neater if we do it that way and then for these rails the best thing to do is to add a redstone block there and a redstone block there and then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on that side so just to get your alignment right you're going to want to get the block on the corner of this side and then bring that same pattern along all the way through just like that now all of the rails are powered everything is looking good and i think we're actually getting pretty close to completion um the next thing to do is to really just make sure you've got your hopper mine carts in place make sure they're all good and uh running properly okay i've gone ahead and blocked off the hopper 
Um, so both hoppers now have fuel just so we can continue with our work for a bit. And again, remember, you want to make sure you fill up all of these hoppers with the fuel. Okay, so we're basically done with the entire build. Uh, the last thing to do is to do the collection system for all of the stuff. So if you want to basically stop the video here, you more or less can. The system's good to go as long as you keep in the key points that I mentioned to you earlier. The system is basically good to go. I'm not going to show this one running because I have already um, a system right there that works perfectly fine. And I don't need to fill all the furnaces with um, with uh, temporary items and fuel to start off with. So what we'll do is we'll just tell you that this is done. Again, remember this block here needs to stay uh, empty everything around it can be covered absolutely fine go ahead and put carpet around everything else it should work fine nothing here though no carpet no comparators nothing okay so for the refueling system here's what we're going to do or what i would suggest so option number one if you want to keep things really simple uh, go ahead and put a double chest just like that and then what you're going to want to do is grab uh, some hoppers now this is also going to require a fair amount of hoppers so just keep that in mind and then you basically want to run it down all from that side just like this and then oh, we don't need that one there and then you're going to want to do the same following up all of the furnaces basically if you do this this is probably the best option for the easy refueling system um unless you want the refueling system to come back up to you like you see in the other one in which case just give it a second and i'll show you how that works again do the same thing on this side grab the hoppers bring it all the way around i would actually very much advise if you can to consider putting uh, some blocks on top of these hoppers just to make sure nothing falls in them um although this not really too detrimental to the whole situation it would probably make things a little bit easier so if your objective was to do the nice and simple version then you're pretty much done um all your return items will come back into this system here your input chest is here and your fuel chest is here and everything's looking good now, if you would prefer to use the water system where the, uh, the items come back to you in a double chest at the top, then here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off with uh, the chests. So let's go ahead and put some temporary blocks there just so we know what we're dealing with. And in fact, we can do something just like that. And then what you're going to want to do is grab some hoppers, put them into the back just there. And then what we'll do is get rid of all of this stuff. So everything else that you saw earlier, adding all these hoppers in is still relevant all the way up to this point. Everything else here is welcome to go. And for the next part, all we're going to want to do is grab some droppers. Grab the droppers, put it in front of the hopper just like this. Then we're going to want to add a little uh, clock or observer clock, should I say. So you're going to want to grab some sticky pistons. We're going to need the observer, of course. We're going to need a comparator. Oop. Just like this. So all you want to do is add in the uh, observer on top of the comparator. You're going to want to place a block on top of that. You're going to want to add a sticky piston and then an observer facing downwards. And actually, you want it to start off in this position here. So make sure that this starts off just like this. And then you want to put another observer facing downwards like that. <clears throat> Once you've got the system up and running, what you want to do is start creating the waterways. So we'll go ahead and bring uh, the system around. Okay, so once the dropper system is built, essentially all you want to do is bring the waterways around just like this. And you're going to want to make sure that you are one block away from this one. So we're going to put uh, a block here and then we're going to bring the waterways around just like this. So once you get to the second last hopper, you want to build out four blocks. And then basically just build a L turn just from here. So you build this L turn, you're going to go ahead and bring this up just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and grab some soul sand. And we're going to place two blocks of it here. You want to bring these blocks around and make sure you block off this back bit because the waterways is going to be coming through this way. Um, so make sure that's all covered up. And then obviously this will all be covered up as well once the uh, build is complete. 
So once you do this, you're going to want to grab your ice, break out this block here, place a um, packed ice and then a trap door on top. We're going to want to grab the water. This is where things get a little bit uh, interesting. So here's the idea. So we're going to get rid of this block here. We're going to place another packed ice, get another trap door, and then we're going to want to put water again. And then just under this block, another trap door and another packed ice that goes under there. So this is what the waterways should look like. You're also going to want to block off uh, the top of the dropper like that. And then you want to do exactly the same thing on this side as well. All right, now that both of the sides are done, uh, just make sure everything looks exactly how you see it here. Make sure all the ice blocks are in the right places, all the trap doors are in the right places. Um, if everything is right, when you shoot an item into the system, let's go ahead and put a redstone repeater. You can see the item ends up on the soul sand, which is exactly where we want it to be, because now we're going to build up the water tunnels. So again, go ahead and grab these blocks. And grab again, These this is what I use glass on the other side for. So you don't have to use um, glass. You can use any temporary blocks or concrete blocks, whatever. Um, and that's it. This is pretty much us almost done. So if I add in from here, we're going to need uh, maybe we can add in some slabs. And then the last thing you're going to want to do is basically add in all your water buckets. So make sure you've got you've got sources all the way up. And if you do. Perfect. That should be the system pretty much done. Go ahead and top it off with either slabs or trap doors or whatever to make sure the items don't come flying out of the elevator. And then that will all be collected into your double chest here. And that, my friends, is the entire tutorial for this video. Um, sorry this took long and sorry if it's not that great. I'm <laughs> not someone who usually does the tutorials, mostly just the, the builder and the world downloader. If you have any issues, um, please feel free to leave a comment in the se uh, comment section down below. Um, there's also a link for my Discord in the description. Make sure you go on there, send a message into the, um, the general chat. Um, myself or I'm sure someone else on the Discord will be happy to help. Um, but yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.